Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another, well, I was about to say another show, another episode, but it's not, it's not, it's a call-in show, oh my goodness, a call-in show, I can't tell you the last time we did a call-in show, it's Easter holidays in the UK, I'm sure it is all around the world as well, or most of the world as well, and I just thought, you know what, we ain't, we ain't done we ain't done any content in a while. You know, we've, we've, we've upped the shorts game. For those of you who are keen followers of the content, we've upped the shorts content, the reels on Insta and uh, TikTok. Yeah, we've got a TikTok channel, people. Do, do people know that? We've got a TikTok channel. Um, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all of that, all of that, all of that. Um, so, yeah, we've been putting content out there in short form like that 30 second type stuff i hope you lot have been enjoying that um but in terms of like episodes and stuff we, we've gone a bit quiet you know you know it's ipl season you don't know already in april and may ipl just dominates the whole cricket calendar so a lot of the stuff that goes on in west indies cricket goes a bit quiet but things have been going on things have been going on before the show started i wrote down right it's a call-in show but what are people going to call in and even say? What's been going on to even call in on? You, you lot decide. Today's episode is down to you, the fans, the supporters of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. You decide what you want to talk about. But here's just some things you could talk about just in case um, it's something you want to come in and riff about. So I've written down the following topics. You don't have to talk about these, by the way. Obviously, the, the West Indies Red Bull Championship. Um, the the recent um, AGM, Cricket West Indies had their recent AGM where there's been profits um, made. Uh, they've talked about well, how much would they say? I think they said they've made a fourteen million dollar profit in the calendar in the twenty twenty three calendar year. Twenty twenty four is due to be another good profit uh, making year for CWI because obviously the World Cup is happening as well. Um, this year, so that look, there'll be profit at the end of 2024 as well, which is just as well because 2025 and 2026 they are scheduled to have deficits at the end of both those years because there's no India tour, there's no England tour, and of course there's no Global World Cup being held in the Caribbean. So they've they've up their coffers. So you may want to talk about that. Um, obviously, there's some negative news that have come out of the AGM in so much as uh, the directors. Uh, of Cricket West Indies refused to pass um, or uh, Kishore Shallow did not garner enough votes to change the constitution, which would allow a president to, ser to serve three terms. I'm, I, I haven't spoken to Kishore yet. I am going to reach out to Kishore to get him on the show. Um, so, so I'll ask Kishore about it when he comes on the show, um, hopefully in the next month or so. But um, it makes sense why Kishore Shallow would have wanted to implement a three-term role for a president because the problem with Cricket West Indies, it's only each term is two years, right? So a, a president is allowed to have a two-term uh, run. So, for example, Ricky Skerritt did 2019 to 2021 and then 2021 to 2023. And obviously Kishore is in role now. Now, the problem is, is that if a president is only in role for four years and then they have to bounce, how do you safeguard the changes you have made? How do you make how do you make sure that the long term process that you have started is embedded properly if you're only in post for four years? And so say 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 Kishore gets reelected, which I would assume he will do in 2025. Right. So three years from now, 2027, Kishore Shallow's um, stint as Cricket West Indies president will end, right? Because unless he's able to bring back to next uh, this year's AGM and say, no, come on, seriously, we need we need to put three terms in place. 
Now, Kishore could leave in 2027, and all it would take is a bad mind president to follow him and just undo everything that's already been put in place. So I'd assume, without speaking to Kishore yet, that's why he was trying to get that passed um, in the AGM. Um, we've had the women's Super 50, uh, the women's T20 Blast, won, both won by Jamaica. Uh, we've just had the announcement of the women's ODI and T20 squads to tour Pakistan. Uh, that tour begins on the 18th of April, goes on for about a month. So that's been announced as well. And of course, there's the IPL. Some of you will want to talk about the IPL, you know, um, and West Indian performances and so on and so forth. So I've kind of given you some topics. That's not even everything. Uh, here we go. In the chat, I'm going to put the link to come on the show. I'll do that now in a second. So if you want to come on, just press the link and you'll go backstage and then I'll bring you on. I didn't even do the proper introduction, though. For those of you who aren't, for those of you who are new, I'm Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt on half the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. I've just assumed you already know that. But you never know. Maybe someone's listening for the first time ever um, on the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. So if not, um, if you are, sorry, that's who I am. Let's just see some comments that are in on the show before I start. Um, who's here today? Uh, Tager M says, this is April Fool's episode where everyone waits and CCP does not come on. Now, I, I just forgot. I just forgot. I forgot to set up the mic and everything. So that, that was why. Rickon's about. Yeah, big up Rickon. Fireball, of course, is about. Oh, no Easter Monday holiday in America. Well, you know that place is godless anyway, so can't help them. Um, T Brown, CCP back in a more friendly time zone. Yeah, yeah. 100%, 100%. Angie says the cap looks nice. Thank you very much, Angie. Um, Rickon, get Kishore on soon. Yeah, I... I meant to send Kishore a message today. Um, I'm definitely going to send it to him tomorrow, if maybe not later tonight. For all I know, Kishore's watching this on his burner account. But um, I would be shocked if Kishore doesn't want to come on the show. Uh, it makes sense that he comes on the show, given the AGM and the report has just come out. Um, so I, I, Kishore will come on. We haven't had Kishore on since we met him in London to do the um, 100 days in the job episode with him which is probably the best episode we've ever done in terms of quality of the show. Um, so it's about time Kishore comes back on again. Uh, so, yeah, well, I'll reach out to him later today, maybe early tomorrow. Um, who else? Arawak says, do you think Kishore would get re-elected? Yes, 100%. Um, I think, yeah, 100%. I don't, even think, I don't think that's in any doubt. The bigger question you should ask yourself is who would go against him? And more than likely, the only people that would go against Kishore, it would come, it would be somebody from Barbados or somebody from Guyana. Respectfully, those two cricket associations usually are the ones who contain the ops. So I would expect somebody from Barbados or Guyana to go up against him. Um, but it would be silly for people to not reward Kishore um, uh, for his stint so far, particularly as Cricket West Indies have turned a big profit. You can't not re-elect somebody who's turned a profit, irrespective of the reasons for that profit. He's turned one. Um, let's move on. Sorry, I'm going to put the link in the chat in a minute, people. Uh, Jerry is up in the live. Big up, Jerry. Uh, big up, Kevin Eames. 1-1 uh, draw today, Kevin. It weren't good, you know, but anyways, we've got the point. Uh, big up, Rising Bowler. Uh, and Patton says, yes, America is godless indeed. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> I'm a politics teacher. Most of you know that I'm a teacher in my day job. I teach politics and history. One of these days, I'll I'll do a Caribbean cricket podcast. I'll I'll get my dad back on the show, and uh, we'll do some more history and politics related episodes. Anyways, let's get into it. Um, the link is in the live. Anyone who wants to come on and talk their shit, just click that link and come on the show. You'll come backstage. I'll get you on. In the meantime, I'll keep riffing uh, until somebody is brave enough to come on the show. This is like this is like radio people. It's like radio. Who, who's brave enough to step up, back up their shit, talk their shit live on the Caribbean Creek podcast? If you don't want to show your face, you can, of, you, you can of course, mute your um, mute. Sorry, you can turn off your, um, your camera and just talk instead. But that is up to you. There is a comment, though. Frank Lucas says, what's up? Question for the test team. Do you think this lineup is possible? Craig Tage, Hodgkirk, King. Sinclair, Josh De Silva, Jason Holder, Multi Roach, Shamar. Okay, one second. So 
That's an interesting team you've selected there. Let me get my pen, my pen and my paper. Because in that team, that means you're dropping Alec Athanes and you're dropping Justin Justin Graves. You must be dropping someone else, though. Who else are you dropping in that team? Oh, and then one of Kirk or Hodge. Um, Kirk McKenzie's not going to get dropped. You already know where I stand on this. I don't believe that Kirk McKenzie should be playing test cricket um, for the West Indies. Um, so you know where I stand on that already. But the point is, Kurt McKenzie just went to Australia and topped the averages and scored the most runs, I should say, for a West Indian. You can't drop a man who's just gone to Australia and topped the run scoring chart uh, for the West Indies. So Kirk's going to England no matter what, even though I don't think he should be in the team in general. So Kirk's not getting dropped. Hodge is not getting dropped. He already made a century in this year's uh, Red Bull Championship. He's not getting dropped. So already you have a problem there. Brandon King, whilst I would love to see him in a West Indies test squad slash team, are, are they really going to throw in the towel on Alec Athanase after two test series? Impossible. He's only 24 years old. Impossible. So Athanase isn't getting dropped. The only player in the top six that is going to potentially get dropped is Justin Graves. And obviously Tej Nair and Shandapur is a possibility. So unfortunately, Frank, um, that, that team can't work. That team cannot work. And, and certainly there's too many bowlers in that team. So even with that side, you see what you've got from 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Someone in that 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 has to hold a drop. They, they can't all play. Um, so wheel and come again, Frank. You have to wheel and come again with that side. That one, that one can't work. Um, anyways, we have somebody to come on live on the show. DG is backstage. Looks like he's got an Atlanta Braves beanie on, I think, but we'll soon see. Is it Atlanta Braves? Atlanta Braves. Wait, DG is a baseball fan. Let me maybe I've got that wrong. Anyway, DG, DG is coming on the show. Uh, let's bring him on. One second, people. I'll take this comment off the screen and bring DG on. Yes, DG, how you doing? Hey, what are you doing, man? I am very good. It's not Atlanta, is it? I could see you shaking your head. It, it is Atlanta Braves, but everybody asks me every time they see me one of these things on. I just like how it looks, man. I don't care about baseball. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. I, I like it. I like. Put your head down for a second. I like the design. Yeah, it's a good see? design. I like it, you know? Yeah. So, so what's you, going on, man? You, how are you doing? Are you from Atlanta? No, no, no. I, I live in New Jersey. I'm from Dominica, actually. Okay, okay, okay. Big up yourself yep. anyways. Uh, good uh, first time you've ever been on the show. Last time I did the call-in was about a year ago, and you weren't on it then. So first time ever on the show. Um, good to have you on. Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So what, 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 what do you want to what do you want to pop off about? Yeah, I, I kind of I, I've been following the uh, the regional four day competition and, you know, kind of talking to some of my friends about it. Um, I do think that um, they need to make some changes. Mm. Um, on you know for the England uh, um, tour, mm. I think the team that went to Australia can do good in England, especially considering the, you know the the conditions will be a little bit different. And I think another thing that will um, be beneficial for us is that we're not going to England in early spring, you know early summer, right? It's gonna yeah, be kind of like you know midsummer, July. So that's that's good. Mm. Um, I do think um, like Alec Atenez and uh, you know, needs to kind of, you know, maybe rethink his approach a little bit in, in the last few games of the regional four day and try to maybe bat time and not necessarily, you know, try to score runs. Because if he, if he stays in, he will score. But I mm -hmm. oh, you've got you've got mute. You know, you've mute, you've muted yourself. Impressive. Man. Oh, you're back. You're back. You're back. Oh no. my God! These people keep calling me. Sorry, man. Oh, is that why? Is that why you're meeting people are ringing you? Yeah, it's, it's cutting off because people are calling me. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I was saying that, I, I think Alec needs to try to. So I said they see you live on the I show. I think Alec needs a bad time. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but Alec, I think Alec needs to try to buy time. I think I think Kavim has done well to to kind of lock his place in, especially mm. you know as you said when he came back, he got a hundred right after coming back. Um. The Winwood Islands in general, I think, need to maybe rethink a little bit and, um, you know, 
but I, I I think what has let them down over the last couple of days is you know they're they're batsmen right they haven't been able to score you know run, enough runs so and then overall I think they need to get some more experience in the team a little bit I know the team that went to Australia was good but I think Jason Holder coming back in maybe for Graves I mean I wouldn't drop Graves I would still travel with him but you know you get somebody with a little bit more experience in the middle there to help them out mm. and Sinclair definitely hasn't hurt hurt his uh you know his 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 um his pick there. So I think we have a good young team. Um, the only change I would make is maybe Holder for Graves, and I would I would I would I would drop Sham Chandapal to be honest. I maybe would bring in another opener. Um, somebody who's a little bit more aggressive up top because I I think between he and 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 uh, Bradford, I think it's a little it puts so much pressure on the middle order, especially those guys being inexperienced. So just my okay. opinion there. So I'm going to come back on two things before you go in. Just deal mm -hmm. with. Let's deal with Alec first. So, I I like to say when I believe in a player, I say that I've got stocks in Alec Afanades. I, I genuinely believe he could be whatever he wants to be. I just wonder with Alec if, and I like what you said there about batting time, because Alec to me and what I've seen in the last six months is he's one in and that's why he got he got found out in australia because of it he likes to play shots and i, I just wonder I don't know if this is the right word but i wonder if there's a maturity that he has to develop in his game where he has to accept that you're not always going to be able to just beat ball and dominate the bowlers like you you, you almost have to earn the right to play the shots before you start because and the reason why i say this is because i think it comes relatively easy to him right but sometimes mm -hmm. that can be your biggest downfall because you think i don't know uh, what looks like a, a full ball on a fifth stump line should be slashed to the boundary sometimes you actually have to just See, get your eye in. Do you, do you, do you, do you get where I'm yeah, coming yeah, yeah. from? I just wonder if that's what Alex Alex downfall is at this particular moment in time. Yeah, that's true. I, that's true. I think. I think. Okay, my little boy's talking to me here. Jesus Christ. Okay, buddy. Um. So yeah, I think. I think. Um. Like one thing I would. I would say with that series, right? When I looked at how Kavim Hodge. Sort of like, and he said that right when when he we got found out the first innings right. I think when he was chasing a wide one, and he said to himself, "I'm not going to play that shot." Right. Mm. I think, and Kavan's a little older than Alex still, right? So maybe maybe as you say, right? Maybe Kavan's played a lot more first class cricket, and he maybe understands that level of the game, and maybe that's one thing that Alex needs to work on. But I'm I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you right now. I saw Alex bat when he was 16 years old. Mm. And I remember telling my friends that this, this guy's going to play for West Indies. I never saw somebody play so comfortably at that mm. age, right? Um, and he, you know, I think he has everything. I mean, you can only hear people like Brian Lara talk about him. But I think if he if he succeeds, it's going to come down to his, men, to, to the mental side of the game, not necessarily in terms of his ability, because he has all the ability to be a really, really good player. Um, when I think about some of the other guys who've come through, right? When I remember when Darren Bravo started, right? They, they, were, they had him in the category of Joe Root, Virat Kohli, Kane Williamson. Mm -hmm. They were talking about those four players, right, at that time. Mm -hmm. And Bravo started his career really well, and he kind of, like, waned off. Um, so I don't know, you know, what, what it is that needs to be done there from a from a, uh, a standpoint of, you know, cricket West Indies. But at the same time, I think in, individually players need to look at themselves and think about how, how do they try to maybe change their game to 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 to, to fit the international game because when you get up to that level right they will try different things they will find you out right so it's up to you to work on your game and try to improve then and try to stay there so th that's that's that yeah i think i think um given that alex not yet in demand in t20 cricket he will be one day but given mm -hmm. he's not yet if i was him or if i was his agent I would be trying to get him some overseas Red Bull stints just to work on his game in in um, in foreign conditions. Um, there's only so much you're going to be able to learn in domestic cricket in the West Indies before you you could bend like so. Jason will be in England. Jaden Seals will be in England. Kimar Roach will be in England. It doesn't have to be England, but I just wonder yep. if someone like Alec would benefit 
from going somewhere else in what is our off season domestically yep. to go play some cricket. But that's for him and his agent to discuss. Uh, I just think he could benefit from something like that. Well, that's a that's a very good point, man. I I I I saw the I saw the article with Jason Holder going to England, mm. and I thought that would be really good for Alec. You know, you know, somebody like him to, like you said, you know, maybe go up there and play a couple of games, even if it's not the best opposition, but just to play in, you know, in the, in the conditions there and try to get mm. familiar with that because I, I really see him doing well, man. But, you know, again, I think it's more mental than, than, than physical, really. Last one before you go, you said no Shandapool for you, but here's yeah. the problem. <laughs> who, who, who do we take instead? If, 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 you, if even if you take Shandapool as backup and you say, no, somebody else must open instead of him. Who's right. a bit more, has more shots. Who, who are you gambling on instead? I like the I like the guy from um from Trinidad that plays for for the Windwards. Uh, what's his name again? Solozano. Solozano. Yeah, I like him. I, I think I think he could be a good a good um a good you know create a good partnership there with Craig. Um, I mean, listen, you're not you're not gonna drop Craig, right? No matter what people say about him, he's been hmm. our best test player for the last you know three, four, five years. So you can't get rid of him. Plus, he's the captain, right? So you have to kind of figure out the best way to you know to fit around him and i really think with the lack, lack of experience we have in our middle order mm. you know the, the fact that we don't score quickly enough i i i think up front um puts a lot of especially you know kirk and alec and those guys it puts them under pressure when they come to bat because they always feel like okay now i have to sort of pick up the pace right um mm -hmm. and also i think of something that we struggled with you know over the years it's been years i mean but we've always struggled with rotating the strike no matter what form of cricket we play yeah. So I I find it really interesting that, you know, that's not something that's been kind of brought into the foy by any coaching, any coaching setup that's been there. Like it's always been pretty much a boundary or nothing. Right. Um, and, and when you play the best players in the world, the best bowlers and best captains, if they, you just keep letting them bowl to you, a ball's going to have your name on it. Right. You have to we have to figure out a way to sort of take the pressure off ourselves sometimes. And if that means just playing more positive cricket, trying to run one, more ones and twos, trying to do those things, we have to do more of that. I think Tage sets himself up so defensively that when even when he gets a bad ball, it's hard for him to put it away. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's a if, it, if it's a confidence thing. Um, maybe it is. I, I I think he got some runs in the last game against the Windward Islands, so you know maybe we'll see how he how he goes throughout the rest of the the season, but. I think, you know, he needs to think more positive, right? It, it, not saying you have to score a boundary every ball, but since you know you're not a boundary hitter, then you need to try to rotate the strike more. You need to try mm -hmm. to get off strike. And so I don't know. I mean, you know, he's done well. He did well in Australia the last time. He struggled the last few games. But I do think that, you know, in any avenue of life, right, if people think that they're just going to come in there, not perform and stay there, then you find people going to be mediocre, right? So you have to put a little pressure on them, even if, you know, even if, you know, I, I wouldn't drop Alec, right? He's only played like three or four games, so you give him a little bit of a run. But at some point, he has to come through. The same way with with um with Tage, right? All these guys, this is not this is big boy cricket, you know. This this ain't Sunday league cricket. So at some point, you have to show what what the reason is they brought you there. I mean, I think Kirk McKenzie did really well. I didn't expect him to do as well as what he mm. did in Australia, you know. But but at least he showed that, you know, he was able to kind of put his head down and score some runs, you know. So. Again, th these are the things that the players have to think about. Stop thinking about anything else. Go to England, you know, show a good, make a good showing of yourself. And you already know England. Everything in England is hyped up. Everything is so. If they do well, then you know you never know where it could lead for them. But yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Yeah, listen, listen, DG. Thank you so much for coming on. That last point you made, I just want to reiterate that one though. I think. We have to get ourselves to a point where, irrespective of age, so they've decided at this particular moment in time, we're investing in Kurt McKenzie, we're investing in Alec Athlase. But that point you made was more important than people may realise. If those two believe or are led to believe that we're investing in them no matter what, they too will ultimately reach a point where they become complacent. So there always has to be somebody who is challenging for your, for your shirt, so to speak. So... Mm -hmm. We have to find that fine line between we're invested in youngsters because we think they can come good versus where's the cutoff point where you actually have to perform mm -hmm. before we before we then move you onto one side and someone who's also hungry uh, for your shirt comes through. And I think we've just been guilty in the past 
of Jermaine Blackwood's probably the obvious example. And I like Jermaine Blackwood. But one of the reasons why Jermaine was able to play for so long and then score every time he was under threat, he'd score some runs. That's that's a that's a position we need to get out of where people yep. are scoring runs only when their position is, is under threat. You're supposed to be under threat all the time. Yep. Right? Yep. You're never supposed yep. to be comfortable just because we've got no one else to come into the team. <laughs> so, yep. so, you know, but listen, thank you for coming on the show, DG. Much appreciated. Yeah, man, no problem. Take no problem. All right, then. Take care. Take care. Cool. All right, man. Yes, people, there you have it. DG, the first one up um, on the show. Um, now you see how it goes. Anybody who was frightened, anyone who was scared to, to say what they needed to say, just jump in on the link. It's somewhere in the chat. I think I put it recently. Um, so just press the link and I'll you'll come backstage and I'll sort it out. Let me just take a drink. I know there are some of you uh, making points in the in the um sorry in the chat. Ronaldo, you're up next. I can see Ronaldo backstage. Um do you know what? I thought Ronaldo was Miles Bascom for a second, you know. Looking at the backstage, I was like, nah, surely it's not Miles Bascom on some burner name. <laughs> so that, I don't think it is, you know. <laughs> so, but um, let me just go through some comments before I click on him. Um, the West Indian says, I think Alec is a natural Red Bull player. Um, he, he himself said he prefers Red Bull. As soon as he got some recognition, he'll realise the money's white ball and he's trying to cross over. I don't know about that. Um, you said he's put his name in the IPL or put his name in. I think everybody puts their name in everything nowadays. Uh, doesn't mean you're going to get picked. Um, this, is, this is a point from Vanessa. Vanessa says, do we have a therapist traveling with or associate with the team? I know we definitely used to. I think they're called sports psychologists. Um, I believe a lot of it is mental fortitude and culturally, I think it's not something the players will do on their own. This is a question I need to ask different um, cricket associations. So even like... A, I would be intrigued to know if our different um, cricket associations and franchises employ a sports psychologist domestically. If the first time as a youth when you're playing for the West Indies, and this is men's or women's or age group teams, if the first time you come across a sports psychologist properly is when you're playing for the senior men's side or the senior women's side, that's a problem. If your domestic franchise isn't um, employing a sports psychologist, we're already setting these youths up to fail then, are we not? Because like, it's got to be something that's... In, like, so take football in this country, in England, for example. When you are part of an academy in this country, Premier League, Championship, whatever it might be, you're already seeing sports psychologists from young. That's already embedded within the academy setup. Uh, maybe I'm talking nonsense, but I wonder if it's happening domestically. I bet it's not. I bet it's not. I bet these. I bet these youths don't really see anyone till international cricket comes along, which again means that you're asking youngsters to invest in their own game and invest in themselves, but with what money? <laughs> Anyways, that's a, let me let me bring Ronaldo on, people. Good point from Vanetta there, though. That's a that's a conversation to build on further in another episode. I see some more comments. I'll get. Some. I'm going to bring Ronaldo twenty seven on. Uh, give me a second, people. Let me bring him on here. Yes, Ronaldo, how you doing? I'm doing great, Michelle. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I, I, I'm doing very good. So, first things first, you would, obviously, Ronaldo is the burner name. So, you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to use your government name, but where are you calling from? Well, I'm actually calling from Jamaica. You see me mm -hmm. in my um, Calabar shirt here. <laughs> no, we, listen, we, we rep warmers and warmers only on the carry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right. Um, I just have about three questions. Um, mm. I've been watching all your videos, and recently you made a video about the openers. Um, mm -hmm. I saw you touched on Solozano. I saw you touched on um, Mikhail Louis. And a couple others, but I didn't hear any mention of Kyron Powell. And before before you stop me there, um, I just want to say Kyron, he's played three match. He's a senior statesman now. Um, mm -hmm. he's looked very good in those three games. Um, he has he, he played a brilliant innings. I am saying, um, what do you think Kyron could do in the next couple of rounds? To be considered, I'm not saying he should be selected to go to England, 
But what could he do? Like, we need to give him a criteria. I don't think it's fair to say because he's 34, because he's 35, he's out of contention. Can't we say, oh, Kyron, I needed to score 300s in the next four innings, and they go to England. What would, what would, what do you think they, they would be looking at in order for Kyron to have a slight chance to be considered for selection? So here's what I'm going <laughs> to... Everyone already in the comments saying no. But um, do you know what? I'm going to try and defend you here. <laughs> because Kyron Powell, domestically, is actually very consistent, right? The last time he got selected, I believe, was the South Africa series in 2021. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, yeah. yeah, and I think he made a 50 in and one of those dropped. matches. And then, yeah, then he got dropped, right? Now, I'm just going to read out some stats for people, just because people will be like, how dare Ronaldo... So I'm going to keep calling you Ronaldo. How dare, how dare Ronaldo bring up Kyron Powell? Right, so, so far in this year's West Indies Championship, he's averaging 39, right, with one century and 150. Um, in the Super 50 last year, I know it's a different format of cricket, but we're just talking domestic numbers. In Super 50 last year, he averaged 35 uh, with two fifties, eight innings. In the West Indies Championship last year, the one before this one, he averaged 35 in 10 innings, 100, two fifties. In the West Indies Championship before that one, he averaged 58, 150, 100, 250s from eight innings. As consistency goes, there's no, there'll be no opener domestically as consistent as Kyron Powell. Somebody who over the last three seasons, including this one, has always averaged in the at mid 30s at the lowest, high 30s at the highest, obviously a 50 couple of seasons ago. Now, what people say is, is that Kyron Powell has been given too many chances internationally, right? Uh, so his international test career, where is it? Let me find it. I uh, can't even find it. Right, he averages 26 after 44 test matches, 300s, 750s. So people say that he's had his chance. He shouldn't get recalled again. But here's where I defend you. Beggars can't be choosers, right? If your if your established opener, this being Tayshaun Shanapool, looks horrendously out of form, and the person domestically who is putting up runs is Kyron Powell, then he then he should be a, he should be in the conversation. So if Kyron Powell, so let's call some openers: Tayshaun Shanapool, Solazano, Mikhail Louis, who shouldn't be in the conversation. Exactly. Um, and Zachary McCaskey, right. Those are probably the four in, in the conversation. And let's put Powell as number five. There's two more rounds left. So round six and round seven. If Powell scored a century in both rounds, he'd probably end up as the top run scoring opener in the domestic championship. He has to be in the conversation. I'm not saying that means he goes back into the West Indies team. But if you're thinking about, right, who goes as backup in case... The person who opens with Craig doesn't hit form because it's a three match test series, right? Sometimes people can be guilty of saying you've got to look past older players to look for youth just for the sake of looking for youth. But if the youth aren't better than the older players, then what are you picking youth for? Australia have Usman Kawaja opening at 37 years old. They don't need to look for a youth man, they're just playing whoever's good. <laughs> so, exactly. so, so that's me trying to defend you. If Powell was listening to this now, he'd say, he'd bring up his numbers and he'd say, listen, if it's based on numbers, I should be there. I just don't know where you draw the, draw the line with somebody who's already played 44 test matches and you say, well, you've had your chance. I just, I'm not giving you an answer on that. I just don't know <laughs> if after three years you say, yeah, you've had your chance already. All right, fair enough. I, I'll just like to hear him more in the conversation because i think he has a a good chance if he scores some runs in the next two rounds so that is why i brought that one i have two more questions and mm. then i'm out of here because i know others are waiting um my second question is in another video you mentioned um sunil ambrose now in the middle order mm. um 
So, Neil, as you said, many persons want to kind of write off his career. He's old. He shouldn't go back into um, West Indian colors. And if we look at his numbers, Ambrose is doing well. But the problem we're having now is Kavim mm. Hodge is doing well. And yep. he did fairly well in Australia. Um, Kevin Sinclair looks like he wants to bat at 5-6 up there as well. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've made a video again talking about Sinclair doing that rust and chase role, you know. But um, I think he's a proper number five, number six. Brandon King persons are calling for. So I'm just wondering, how, how are we going to even, even if Ambrose continues brilliant run of form, how are we even going to get back a man in that has been putting up the numbers? And I think it's unfair for him not to get back in. So that's my so, second question. This, this, is, this is my... This is how Sunil Lambris gets into the West Indies test team for me. Um, he won't go to England, I would assume not, because there's just too many people in that middle order um, already. Like, even if Justin Graves doesn't keep his place in the 11, he's going in the squad. He's so, the squad, he's yeah. the, he, to me, Justin Graves is the incumbent backup middle oh, order, yeah. backer, if that yeah. makes sense. Whoever, whoever it is and however they construct the side, he's in that particular, uh, he's the backup. However, when South Africa come to the Caribbean uh, after the England tour, um, uh, Miles Bascom told us that um, there will be a South Africa A team coming over as well. What? Well, Desmond Haynes will be out of a job by then. So whoever the next selector <laughs> is, what they should be Hopefully doing... Hopefully it's you, Mash. Hopefully it's well, you. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. I still haven't... <laughs> boy, they still haven't... Uh, I, I, no one's telling me how to get into it yet, but I'm, 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 I'm trying, but... Whoever the next selector slash selectors are, whoever makes up that A team that plays South Africa A should be all of the players that you believe are the next in line, if that makes sense. So positions four, five, four and five in particular should be the two players in the region that you believe you would call up next if there was an injury crisis. And one of those people has one of those has to be Sunil Ambris. So I think Sunil should be targeting at at the bare minimum a call up to the next West Indies A team. I think he's already done enough to deserve that call up to the next West Indies A team. But someone has just put in the in fact it's just here. Arawak has said put Ambris in 50 over. And this is a this is a different conversation. I wonder how much how flexible we are in looking at our Red Bull Championship and identifying as well who has the skill set to cross over into the into the ODI setup because we can't wait until November every year to wait for Super 50 to decide yeah. who's a good 50 over player or not. You have to be pragmatic and say, well, we've just had a four day championship. Who was able to bat at? a healthy strike rate in Red Bull cricket. And by default, that surely suggests to us that we can cross them over um, into the 50 over format. So they should probably be considering Ambrose in that sense as well. Yeah, definitely. 100% agree. I love that. Hopefully we'll see him in the West Indies. Um, <clears throat> when South Africa get here in the West Indies, a setup. Mm. But, um, my third question. So, of course, we've been watching the IPL, MASH. I don't know. Oh, I know. I remember you saying you're not really a fan of. Now, now this year I've actually paid attention. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was um, watching the IPL, and you know, in particular the West Indians. Mm. And um, I don't know because they're not really getting much of a role apart from poor and captaining LSG and batting up in the top four, top five. Really and truly, most of the guys they've been pigeonholed as maybe finishers and some of the guys are sitting on the bench they're using as um impact so i saw shepherd coming in like with eight deliveries to go i'm like what roman mm. powell so i'm saying um how are we now going to use ipl to fine tune and finalize our setup because there's shamar joseph he's on the bench for lsg so mm -hmm. we're not seeing him and we're seeing the impact of fast bowling genuine pace in IPL, roughing up teams. So I'm saying, how are we going to get to have a look in at maybe a Shamar Joseph to see if he can get in the squad? Um, yeah, when we're not even seeing our players. Kyle Mayers, is he going to be back to the number one opener? Because now it's Charles and King, but 
Mayers mm-hmm. is not even getting a game. He's on the bench. So I don't know. How, what are we going to do if only four or five of our players are playing? And we're not learning anything because Russell, who started up his game for KKR with the ball and bat, we already know Russell is a lock. Puran mm-hmm. started his game. Puran is already a lock. The persons that we want to see, the Hickmeyer, the Rutherford, the um, Shamar Joseph, we're not seeing these guys. And Obed, he's not even in IPL. So how are we going to now come about our final 15 for the World Cup? That's my question. So I actually have a very deep analysis to this one, um, which I may have to do a, a, a full podcast episode on. But let me let me break it down like this. What we are seeing in West Indies cricket right now is the chickens coming home to roost in terms of T20 cricket. Everybody got got jazzed and convinced that West Indies and West Indian players were the best players in T20 cricket because of the GOAT era. Chris Gale, Sunil Narayan, Andre Russell, Kyron Pollard, Dwayne Bravo, Bravo, etc. Right? This generation, they're not the ones. They really ain't the ones. And this is why when when people saw us beat South Africa uh, last year, beat England at home, beat, uh, beat India at home, and I kept saying to people, that wasn't England's full-strength side. That wasn't India's full-strength side. Don't get me wrong. I hope we have a fantastic home World Cup. I hope we at least get to the semifinals, and that would be good, right? But this notion that we have a fantastic T20 side, it's a myth. It's a myth. Because if we had a fantastic T20 side, our gun players would be in IPL right now, being franchise players in the... Like Chris Gale was. Chris... But in IPL, they built teams around Chris Gale. They built yeah. teams around Kyron Pollard. They yeah. built teams around... They still yeah. built teams yeah. around the Ryan and Russell. They built teams around DJ Bravo. These guys, they're, they're just role... They're bench... No, they're bench warmers. They're bench warmers and role players, right? So we are hoping against all hope that this collective of bench players and role players who only really, let's be honest, feature in the B-level T20 leagues. Let's be honest. That's where they really play their cricket. Johnson Charles will go to the Bangladesh Fixing League and bash <laughs> nut runs, right? Carl Mayers will go bash runs in Bangladesh Premier League, right? ILT20, um, yeah. ILT20. <laughs> That's the leagues that these men are beating the ball in. But when is the top, top, top leagues now? They're not getting those picks. They're not, they're not getting those picks because they're not seen as super valuable world beating players. I think Alzari Joseph has played and he's holding licks and he's our premier go to bowler in the in, 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 in yeah, he's getting licks like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what I'm talking about? So, um, uh, the the quite uh, listen, mm, when Russell and the Ryan retire from T20 cricket, the here's boy, I'm gonna say something, this could be reckless. The only T20 superstar we have is Nicholas Puran. That's it. No one else. No one else. The only player we currently have in our T20 side that every single franchise team in the world would want is Nicholas Puran. Not even... People will say Hetmeyer. Nonsense. Nicholas Puran is the only player that you go to any league in any, at any point of the year and Puran is going to get bought at top value no matter what. Nobody else in the West Indies team is like that. Um, so what we have to hope is that when the World Cup comes together, because we're in our own conditions and because we'll have the, the whole region rally beha- rallying behind the team, what we have to hope is that Sammy can... What's that, what's that phrase? Where the, I, can't, I can never remember how to say the phrase properly. The sum of the parts, whatever that is, where um, we become better than the actual individual parts themselves because Sammy is an is effectively a good man manager and is able to make that team yeah. believe that they're better than they actually are. He's going to have to do an Arsene Wenger like 2004 type thing. You know when um, you know when like Arsene Wenger had people like Alex Song. Those players were never world beaters, but Arsene Wenger made those players believe that they should be they should, they're, they're some of the best players ever in in world football. That's what Darren Sammy's going to have to do with um with our West Indies team. 
But how do you think? Um, how do you think we get a chance to then have a look at Shamar? I hear your point. It's true. We don't. We don't have world beaters. If we did, they would have been playing in all the leagues around the world. But Shamar, based on what we've seen in the IPL, right? Express pace is important. Alzari's express pace, but he's getting licks. The other express pace, they are doing really well, picking up three for 20 yard, two for 20. And we don't have express pace. We have medium pace and left mm. arm spin. That's pretty much all we have. Everybody's medium pace, everybody's left arm spin. Correct, so correct. how do we now have a look at Shamar Joseph in time to, to, to you know, possibly draft him in the squad or even a Obed McCoy? What are we going to do about even a Obed McCoy? Because I think both of them should be ahead of um, O'Shea and Thomas. Yeah, 100%. Um, and the problem is, before the World Cup starts, we've only got those three games versus South Africa as as, as warm-ups. But would um, the squad already have to be announced? Yeah, and the, the yeah, squad's technically the supposed to be named. Yeah. Um, Obed McCoy has to be in our World Cup squad. He has to be. Um because we have no, we, we have to go in with left arm. We have to go in with some left arm variety. Surely he has to be yeah. in the squad. Um, Shamar, I'm 50 50 on Shamar. If Shamar doesn't play in IPL or only plays one or two games, let me uh, let me put the question back on you. If if luck now only play him for so what is it? Is it 14 games in the group stages or yeah, is it 14, 18, games. 14, 14 right? If luck now only playing for two, maybe three games maximum, would you take? And he doesn't do well, would you still take him in the World Cup squad? Uh, if he doesn't do well, but he creates chances, and it looked as if he can do well in condition, in, in home condition. So it's a difficult one for me. I think it depends. Um, if he looks like, oh my God, he's going to pick up lots of wickets, mm. then definitely. Because let's say it's tricky edge um feeler dropping his catches all, all of these things you know um then i would definitely take him because a lot of persons might look at mitchell stark for example in ipl none for 53 and none for i think mm. 47 and people might say oh stark don't look good but actually two catches were dropped off his bowling there were a lot of streaky edge and i think stark looks fantastic with the new ball mm. so i would definitely say australia need to still of course stick with Stark. So I would say if Shamar is, if he's going to play three match and it's expensive, but you know, he's creating opportunities, which we saw in the test series, almost every delivery, it mm -hmm, seemed like mm -hmm. something was going to happen. Yeah. So I think if that's the case, then I would select him. But what would be your thoughts if that's the case? I mean, ultimately, so I think Lucknow are playing, they played that Oh, the, the Indian guy was it Mayank? Mayank? Yeah, Mayank? yeah, that, Mayank, Mayank. yeah, and, He's and he was bowl, he, he was bowling a hundred what 150 clicks or something. Yeah, you would assume that Shamar can bowl 150 clicks as well. And ultimately, irrespective of what Shamar goes on to do or doesn't do for luck now, the, the reality is, is that he's an X factor. Pace makes you an X factor. All we need to know is, does he have any control? That's actually all we need to know. We don't need to know. If he's going to take X amount of wickets, we just need to know, can he bowl to a plan and can he show control in the shortest format of the game? If the answer to those two questions is yes, but he doesn't and he just doesn't happen to take many wickets. I don't think the wickets matter because then Darren Sammy has to look at it and say, we have a bowler who can bowl 150 clicks and show control. Basically, everything that O'Shane Thomas should be doing, but doesn't currently do. Yeah. And then you say, because you, 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 your two X factors in the shortest format of cricket are having a good leg spinner and having somebody who can bowl express pace basically at any stage of the innings. If Shamar shows any level of indication that he can do that, he has to go in the World Cup squad. 100% agree. Mm. Right. So right. that's how I see it. All right. Thank you for having me on the show, man. No problem, man. No problem. Looking forward to you. Yeah, yeah. Looking seeing you um, next year as a selector so <laughs> and i hope you you you, you figure you, you call bascom you know <laughs> get your information ready <laughs> get yourself sorted man listen listen the aim is to try and make these call-ins more regular now going forward but um so if they are make sure you come back on again yeah definitely
No problem. Take care. Enjoy your evening. All right. You too. Cool, cool. Yes, people. Yes, yes. Look at this. 50 minutes already on the call-in show. Out here like a radio station. Um, people, um, has anyone pressed like? Has anyone pressed like? I don't, I haven't even, at no point did I say like the video or anything like that, you know. Um, anyone who's watching, do you, how many likes are there? Can someone tell me how many likes are before I bring on the next guest? Um, let me just go to some comments at the same time. So Beauty Connoisseur says, what has happened to Carrier? I guess he's fallen out of favour. Um, I think West Indies, are, I think West Indies are probably going to say to themselves that Moti and Hussain show more control than the risk of bringing in Hayden Walsh Jr. and or Carrier. And I just think they just won't bother with a leg spinner. The question everyone has to ask themselves is, is whether if your if your leg spinner isn't world class, is there any point in having a leg spinner? So if we don't have an Adil Rashid or Ravi Bishnoi or whatever, right? If we don't have a world class leg spinner, you might as well stick with the the, the two left armers in Multi and um, Hussein and say, well, at least they show control. A um, uh, couple more comments for Lewis uh, Granada. I'm going to bring you on. So I'm just looking at some comments before I bring you on. Uh, CCP, I know I'm off topic here, but do you think Jason Holder should reinvent himself as an ODI opener? Hmm. Well, he hasn't retired from ODIs yet. How old is Jason now? 32? Jason's 32. Next World Cup, he would be 35 going on 36. You can't rule him out because of age. If, if Jason Holder still wants to play in that ODI World Cup and genuinely believes that he can contribute to West Indies cricket in 50 over cricket, by that World Cup, then there is, I think your argument is fair to say he should reinvent himself. Um, Jason has never been any kind of world beater in LGI cricket. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, he's not retired though. If Jason didn't want to play in that World Cup, he would have already announced his retirement from LGI cricket. Um, Jason's going to be over here in the summer to play for Worcestershire. Um, in fact, he's going to be here very soon. What am I talking about? Because the the first class, the county championship starts on Friday. I swear, I swear, the email I read or the press release said Jason's available for the first five matches. So Jason, technically, Jason should be here this week. I need to reach out to Worcestershire and break bread with Jason. I hope I don't know if Jason, I don't know if he's anti. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be anti towards me, but I need to go break bread with Jason and see what he's saying. Uh, maybe go up to Worcestershire and pay him a visit and see what he's saying. Um, anyways, let's bring on the next guest, uh, Lewis Granada. Uh, let's bring Lewis on. Or is it Louise? Um, anyways, he'll soon tell me. Yes. Uh, hello, Mash. Hello, Mash. Good evening. Calling Good. from Brazil. Nice. To Brazil? See you. Yeah. Brazil, yeah. Okay. Hello. How do I say your nice name first? In, Louise or uh, Louis? My name is, uh, in Portuguese, we'd say Luiz Granada. Yes. But you can just say Luis. Doesn't really matter for me personally. <laughs> we'll uh, go with Luis. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. No problem for me, mate. So jumping on the county championship uh, mm -hmm. wagon, since we're talking about it now, we have a couple players of ours playing there this year: Jaden Seals, Kimar Roach, a couple others, Jason Hoda. But mm -hmm. again, the major problem I see this year: no batsmen are playing there. Craigie, last year, we saw him playing for Warwickshire. But again, this year, apparently, no contract so far. That's a bit weird. And Shea Hope, last year, played for... I don't Yorkshire. remember. Which, Yorkshire. He played for Yorkshire. But since he, since he reinvented his T20 uh, game in the CPL last year, he's got his new um, IPL deal. I suppose he won't be playing any county this year. So... What do you think, Mash, that Craigie is not playing this year? He was in a dreadful state when he played last year. He got a couple of ducks. And he was in bad form for a, for a reasonable amount of time. He seems to be regaining his form around this time after he scored that century in the in the count. Oh, sorry, in the championship this year. So what do you think? Do you think he can play in the later rounds or not? Okay, so um in a, when i've answered this by the way we're going to talk about cricket in brazil but um but um the thing with craig so craig has always had 
I think, below par returns when he's not all the time, but I think before this, he played for Gloucestershire, I want to say, and he was subpar for Gloucestershire as well. Um, Craig's not had the best of times in county cricket. Now, what you have to, as a county side, if a county side is picking up a West Indian player, you're going for an experienced player, somebody who's played tons of international cricket, right? Craig fits that mould. Jason fits that mould. Kimar, obviously. Even Shea, when he got picked up by Yorkshire, because of what he's done in OGI cricket, his name will resonate uh, to, to county cricket stakeholders. Jaden Seals, up to his injury, one of the best young bowlers in world cricket. So his name will resonate. The problem, Although your point is valid, let me just give you our top six. And why would any county want any of these players, respectfully? Tej Narayan Shandapal, Kurt McKenzie, Alec Athanase, Justin Graves, Kevin Hodge, Kevin Sinclair. Okay, let's just take those six. I'm not saying that those six aren't good enough, but what I am saying is that none of them have enough international experience that would make a county take a gamble on them. Yeah, okay. A, a, count, a, a county would sooner take a gamble on an on an Australian cricketer who is nowhere near the Australian side, but has the grounding of Sheffield Shield cricket. So they'll be like, "Oh, you've come from a rigorous, you've come from a rigorous um, domestic system. We know we can fly you over, and you're going to be um, you're going to be competent, productive." Yeah, but those six players I just called to you. Probably between the six of them, they have about 10 test caps or 12 all in total, right? You, yeah. Why would you? Why would you? I would love them to, but why would, be would, you take, why would they take the risk? Uh, no point, really, right? I, I mean, the only player I can tell you could, uh, for, for just for comparison, I was reading uh, the uh, Viv Richards biography. Do you know it? Uh, Hitting Across the Line. I think it's quite well known. And Viv talks about going to England for his, for the first time. And the thing he talks about the most is the weather. He says, it's just too cold here. And I think a lot of them, yeah, he talks about it so long. He was there with Andy Roberts. And they talk so long about the weather and how it's dreadful in London. Awful place to be at. And that's the thing. I think a lot of our players feel very not comfortable in English conditions. Some of them seem to be playing fine. Some others feel slightly sluggish. Uh, I remind, it reminded me when DJ said it early in the live about uh, Athanas playing any kind of cricket in England just to get used to the conditions. Because just like, no, I'm not saying comparing Athanas to Viv Richards. Athanas is a fine cricketer, obviously. He plays for my team, the Windward Islands. I love him for that very much. But even <laughs> then... You have to say, uh, he was never getting a county deal anytime soon, yeah. as far as we know, unless he has like three centuries against England. Not sure if that's happening, would like to, but even then. Uh, but any, do you think um, he could be playing in some league cricket in yes, Lincoln, so that's, for that's, example? Yes, that's what I was going to say. That would be perfect yeah. for him, in my, so, in my opinion. So this is what I would love to see, right? And again, this comes back to the people who are agents of these players, right? So Nathan, let me give an example. Nathan Seeley, who was the West Indies under-19 vice captain, yeah, um, good call he, um, his agency, which is Gravity Sports, have got him a deal in league cricket. Um, so he's over here now uh, playing. Yeah. He's going to be playing Club league cricket. cricket. Right? Yeah. Club cricket, yeah. Um the name of the team escapes me now. But anyways, the point is he's over here. So that's why when, when we're talking about Athenaeus earlier on, I was saying I'd love to know what some of these agents are doing because there are certain West Indian players who they're not in, I, they're not in IPL. Um, when our domestic championship finishes um, in about three weeks' time, right? So that's the middle yeah. of April. Now... Yeah. IPL is going on until essentially June. So, and there's no more domestic cricket for these guys to play. They'll be like cool and smooth and things like that. But if you're, mm. if you're, let me pick a player, Kevin Sinclair. Perfect. 
I, I don't know who Kevin Sinclair's agent is, but if I was Kevin Sinclair's agent, I'd be like, well, you know what? You're definitely going to be on the England Test Series. You're going to be in the squad to travel there. Let me get you a club deal. Do you fancy going to England to be an overseas pro? Most of them have already sorted out their overseas pro. But the point is, do you fancy going? Let me sort you out a club deal and you can get used to playing in England prior to the... the that, I, I just, I'd love to... I'd love to know. I mean, cool, cool Vern Singh has just put in the chat here that yeah, okay, Russian yeah. Primus is coming to the UK. Oh, I don't yeah, know I if that's that. true. I, heard that. I, I don't know if that's true, but that's the type of thing I'm talking about. Now, a perfect example of that for me, Mash, is do you, do you remember the beginning of, this, of the championship this year? I think Justin Greaves didn't play the first three rounds. Casey Carty, I, I'm not really sure. I don't think he played in the start of the championship as well. I could be wrong. No, no, don't not say I have a perfect memory, but like if you're not playing, what are you doing then? Recovering from the from the test series? Casey Carty wasn't in the test series, so what was he doing? No, I think he was playing the ODI series. No, he was playing the ODI series. So fair enough. But what about Justin Greaves? He he could have played three more games than Jason Holder. He didn't. He isn't getting any wickets. Although he's scoring some good runs, but still no wickets, which he's an all-rounder, so I suppose he should be getting some nice wickets. Uh, last year he had a very good season for the Windwards, but mm -hmm. now he's batting well, bowling a bit, not going too well for the Leeward Islands. It's a been that situation. So Griggs is probably going to England either way for the Test series in the squad, because at this point I think Holder is a. Uh, is obviously key. He's probably going to play on the first squad on the first game, but uh, Greaves, I'm not really sure. And with most of the other players, if you're not playing, if you have a central contract with the CWI, you're not playing any championship, not playing anything. You should be looking for literally anything. I, I'm reminded that reminds me. Didn't Jewel Andrew after the third round go play uh, club cricket? I think it was in in, in Trinidad, didn't he? So we'll play again. Yeah, he played club cricket. So I Who think are we talking about? Jewel, Jewel, Jewel Andrew. Yeah, Jewel Andrew. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, so, so that's let me, my main point. Let me yeah. let me just jump Go. in there because first things first, I just need to let people know because as you were talking and I put Coolvern on the on the. I put his comment up and then only realized after I put the comment up who exactly that was. <laughs> so okay. I just just wanna I just wanna tell everyone who's either in the comments or listening that uh, I mentioned Gravity Sports Agency um earlier on. So Coolvern is actually associated with Gravity Sports. So um when I said that Nathan Seeley has a deal, he will be at Shelton uh, uh CC, and that's why Coolvern said that Russian. Primus is coming over here. Yes, you can take that as a given, that that is definitely happening then as well. So thank you to Coolvern. Sorry, I should have recognised that um, at the beginning. Big up Coolvern for the for the exclusive. Now, Luis, let me just uh, get on okay. to... There's a point you raised there I want to come back to. Right, Justin Grace. Yeah, Justin Grace. What, what I would expect is happening here for Justin is Justin, Justin ultimately has to make a decision, which is that how do I cement my place in the West Indies team? Is it with the ball or is it with the bat? Now, if I'm him, he's probably doing the right thing. It's probably with the bat. Because if you're batting at number six for the West Indies, what you do with the ball is, is a supplementary skill. You're not at number six because we're expecting you to take fifers or, or, or fourfers or anything like that. You're basically there to give our frontline bowlers a rest. Let's just say argument's sake. That our frontline bowlers were Shamar Joseph Alzari Joseph Kimar Roach, right? Okay. Justin okay. Graves is just there to give them a rest if he's batting at number six. Like in so, the test series, I guess Australia. Yeah, just in just yeah. yeah, in any kind of like test situation. So he's probably right to focus on with focus on his batting and put up volume of runs which say, Hey, selectors, you can rely on me to bat inside the top six. Jason Holder is the other way round. Jason yeah. Holder has to take wickets first and foremost to remind everyone, hey, I actually take wickets as a frontline bowler and I can I can be considered as a part of the bowling pack. And then the runs that I make are the bonus to that, right? Yeah, fair enough. Justin Graves, 
isn't in competition with just uh, Jason Holder. I think he's in competition with Kevin Sinclair. Sinclair, right? really? I, I think he's in competition with Kevin Sinclair. I think I think everyone's got it wrong to think that it's Justin and Jason who are in competition. Whoever whoever is considered better out of Kevin Sinclair and Justin Graves will bat at number six. Jason Holder will bat at number eight. That's what I believe will happen, and and Josh De Silva will will separate the two. But let's let's okay. see. That's what I think is going to happen. But, no, sure. but, but let us see. That's a spicy take for me because really, if we were talking about batting, just batting specifically, really, Justin Greaves is no match to uh, Sinclair. Sinclair has scored, I think, one century, got close to a century a couple of times now. I not sure. I think he scores eighty nine against the Windward, something like that. He always comes in the clutch when he's batting low in the order, and he always scores a mountain of runs when he's. I think he's batting five for Guyana right now. Like, mm -hmm. like that's ridiculous for a man who's supposed to be a a rounder be batting fifth. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, man! He's scoring too many runs, and I think I agree with you when you talk about him being being pigeonholed into this idea of being the next Boston Chase. I'd rather see Sinclair batting a bit lower and getting some more wickets than he is right now. But, but the problem really is spinners in the Guyana team, Moti, uh, Vesemi Bermol. Really, it's mm -hmm. complicated to include him and bowling and batting at the same time for Guyana is really complicated. I'm not really sure what they can do about it. Really, I mean, I think, he's a key think, player for Guyana, right? You can't just yeah, drop Kevin. He's, he's, he's a key player with the bat right now, and I think fundamentally, and this is always one of the kind of downs, um, down points or downsides, I should say, to uh, our domestic competitions. Ultimately, these teams want to win the competition. So, as yeah. much as we'd like to see Kevin Sinclair bowl some more, Guyana don't care if Kevin Sinclair bowls some more. If Kevin Sinclair is making runs. And per Mole, Multi, Null Smith, and um, Isaiah Thorne are bowling them to victory, then that's all that matters to them. It, yeah, it doesn't really they're, not gonna, they're not going to bowl. They're not going to bowl Kevin Sinclair just because it, it's it's good for him and his West Indies career. If you see what I mean. Anyways, yeah, Jeff. No. Before oh, Jeff, sorry, Luis. Before you yeah. go, Jeff has a question here, which you have to answer now. No. So Jeff okay. says, Jeff says, ask Luis about cricket in Brazil. So yeah, uh, talk to us briefly about cricket in Brazil, please. Oh, cricket in Brazil is, I've, I've got to be very honest, it's non-existent. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, I'm from a rural area, so I don't really live in, in any major city. My, I, I live in a small town, so I made my own cricket equipment. Equipment. I didn't, my balls, my bats, I made them myself with some wood I got here. Because uh, since I live all my family uh, lives around the farm, so I can just make my own bats and stuff like that. So for me, it's easy. I call my mates. I taught them how to play cricket. I just go out, uh, go to any field, uh, go with the lads and play some nice cricket. For me, it's easy. But for anyone else who wants to start, and I love the sport, of course, um, just a note, I started watching cricket because I saw Jason Holder scoring that double century in Barbados in 2018. That's what got me to watch uh, cricket. That was a really good double century. Lovely. Either way, in no, Brazil, no, hold on, you... no, hold on, no, wait, okay, wait, okay. what? <laughs> no, it, it was a great, sorry, sorry, it was a great no, okay, double okay. century. But how did you suddenly switch the TV on? And, and no, okay, on okay, calm down, okay. But it's a bit easier because I was, okay, I always studied about Red, about the Caribbean. And once I was reading about Grenada and I saw that, um, they played a, a game called cricket, and I told myself, what even is cricket? What, what the bloody hell is this? I don't even know what that is. So mm. I turned on the telly, and I put on YouTube, um, cricket. And the first thing was on, okay, I like you a bit. I like you a bit, Mash. I'm going to be very honest. The first thing that was on my telly was West Indies four-day championship. Uh, <laughs> Windward Island versus Trinidad and Tobago. And I thought to myself, what even is this? And I'm not going to lie much. I saw Devin Smith batting and I fell in love, mate. He batted so well against Trinidad and Tobago. I said to myself, man, what is he doing here? What is Devin Smith doing here? So then after that, later on, I saw there was a test between um, the Windies and England. I watched it. 
and by coincidence, Jason Holder scored a double century. And that, and that was really amazing for me. I love that so very much. That was one of the best moments of me watching West Indies cricket. I can't really lie to you, much. That was lovely. And from there, you were hooked. Hooked forever. Then I followed your channel. Uh, I, I remember the first time I watched you was a call-up like this. A call -up. I don't remember the last time I did a call-up, but I watched it and it was lovely. I liked it. I thought of calling you, but I didn't. I don't think I would be speaking English as well as I am right now. So fair enough. So <laughs> it's a bit of a mashup, isn't it? This, <laughs> but, this, yeah. this, is, this is one of the greatest stories I think I've ever heard. Yeah, mate. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pure insanity. I always no, knew that Mash. Kevin Smith was the GOAT, you know, but now I know he's the yeah. real GOAT out here. <laughs> Mash, for you to have an idea, uh, a school here, a high school, invited me to teach the kids how to play cricket, right? So mm -hmm. I brought up my equipment, taught them how to play cricket, mentioned some of the greats, uh, Tejan Richard, the Paul, Alec Astonis, Kyron Powell, Raymond Rifa, you know the greats. The greats, then, yeah. Uh, when I got back home, I went to my grandma's house to have some nice Brazilian lunch. And when I got there, my grandma told me, Oh, did you teach the kids how to play your made-up game? And I told, yes, yes, grandma. I, to I taught them how to, how to play my made-up game. I, I, to I taught them. That was quite funny. Most people here, if you say cricket, they have no idea. Absolutely. None so ever. The Brazilian Cricket Association, once I sent them an email, I told them, Oh, I'm from uh, a small city here in Bahia. Uh, yes, I'm Bahia, from Bahia, uh, Salvador. Yeah. Not Salvador, a bit down here, uh, near Porto Seguro. But anyway, I told them, I'm from here, from Bahia, and all that stuff. I play some cricket. I have like 30, 40 people I taught how to play cricket. And I wanted to know, can I even buy a bat from you? Because I make my own bats. I wouldn't say they are awful, but they exist. But even then, can I get a proper cricket bat? You know, just saying. They never answered my email, so fair enough. And I gave up on them. They don't really promote the sports. They don't really do anything here. They post some stuff on Instagram, but really, it's unheard of. They don't really care. They don't really develop the game anywhere beyond their area of influence, which is near Minas Gerais for now. So, yeah, that's basically, they don't promote the sport. They don't do anything. I'm the odd, odd case out. Because I'm a native Brazilian who just for pure chance found out about cricket and just watches it. So it's a specific case. It's a very specific one. So it's not, uh, they didn't help me in any sort of way. So yeah, that's basically it. Listen, Panda, Panda underscore Steph says, can we buy this man a bat? Luis, this is no. the greatest story I think I've ever heard. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, 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 we no, are no. getting, we are getting a cricket bat out to where you are. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit up a couple of people, a, a couple of people I know. We're, we're oh, going to connect. Different. We're going to connect. DM me, DM me, message me. Mate, um, you don't need uh, it. Mate. And uh, I'm going to sort this out. This has to be done. And then when this bat arrives um, to your house, I want a picture with it and everything. This is a great story. Okay, no, mate. <laughs> but just so you know, I'm a great bowler, mate. If I got against I'll, uh, Shamar Joseph, mate, I, I reckon I can get 130 clicks. I'm a good bowler. I'm a good bowler. Not going to lie, mate. Me against you, mate. I, I can get a couple of wickets against you. Just saying, just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you could. Listen, Luis, <laughs> what, a, what a chat, what a conversation. Thank you uh, so no, much. Thank you no, so man, much nothing. for coming on, man. And I'm serious about that, by the way, with the bat situation. Um, hit oh, me up, Lord. send me a message, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go talk to some people and see what I can sort out. Okay, thanks, Mash. Thank us, thanks everyone. It was lovely. No worries. To you Take tonight. care, bro. Much uh, appreciated. Yeah, yeah. This is why these live calling shows have to happen more regularly, people. What a story! I, uh, I think Kevin. Where <laughs> there was something Kevin said. Where is he? Where is he? Kevin said at one point, Mash ain't got no words. That's one of the few times where I've just had to stay silent and just listen. I actually didn't know what to say um, at certain points. What a story. What a story from uh, Louise there. And uh, it just goes to show people, Caribbean Cricket Podcast, there's listeners, there's listeners everywhere. Louise, you're still backstage, which is fine. When you message me as well, Louise, um, send me your address because I'm going to send you one of our um, Caribbean Cricket Podcast uh, sweatshirts. Just let me know your size and I'll get one sent out to Brazil. That story was too epic not to not to sort you out something. So um, I'm going to send you one of our sweatshirts um, and you can rep it proudly 
in was it Bahia? I think you said. Um, so yeah, big up, big up, Luis, each and every time. Listen, unless there's somebody who wants to come on in the next two minutes or so, um, I'm probably going to um, call it there. Um, one hour at the that live show went by quick. I only, I feel like I only sat down about ten minutes ago. Timer says it's been one hour and fifteen minutes of a live show. Bloody hell! Just goes to show. Now I know what people who do um, radio is like. Time just goes by quick. Anyways, CCP, CCP people were out here. Oh, sorry, there was a super chat. Sorry, I nearly forgot it. Uh, Daniel Hing says Holder's influence has gone international, yet he still ain't done nothing for Santoki. This is true, Daniel. When Luis was telling that story about Jason Holder's double century, I kept thinking in my head, Holder ain't done nothing for Santoki, you know, but he's done plenty for Brazil. Jason Holder <laughs> has done so much for Brazil. If only he could do something for Santoki. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, CCP people were out here. I think these live call-ins might need to happen. So I've been thinking um, about some new content going forward for the channel. And because it's Easter holidays now in England, uh, and therefore that means I'm off for two weeks. Um, I was thinking, yeah, maybe I should maybe I should bring the live call-ins into rotation, see how they go over this Easter period. I'm thinking like once a week live call-in show because I think whilst we're pretty good at the kind of interaction after shows and people get in the comments and we'll try and reply and if we do a live show we'll put the comments up on the screen i think um the only the the, the right thing to do is to actually get people on the show as well you know and uh, allow you lot to have your say and the only way that can really work is if we do like a regular live call-in show and then you know that's 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 to kind of like give back to the community, you know, because you you lot you lot have kept us on the air all this time. Anyways, people, it's um it's gone past eleven o'clock in England. I just got to my bed. Um, Gio, I know you just said link, but I'm about to wrap this one up. But I will do another live show, Gio. But I've just looked at what the time is. Just to give some people some heads up though in terms of upcoming content because I've been I've been in the background trying to sort some shows out going forward. So, double um, o seven. I know you said you're in hospital there. Hope everything's all right, bro. Um, prayers up for you if there's anything going on that you need prayers and blessings for. Prayers up, blessings up. Um, so some of the shows that um, that are or that we've got recording. So we're going to be doing a show on Lawrence Rowe um, and asking why the Jamaican government hasn't overturned the ban yet. I've just sorted that out. So I've got three guests coming on for that um ashley gray who wrote the the unforgiven if you haven't read that book yet please go and read it it's about all the players that went on the tour to um apartheid south africa so ashley gray will be on the show basil butcher jr will be on the show and chris durin out of jamaica will be on the show and we're going to discuss about lawrence Rowe's career and then also kind of deep dive into why his ban hasn't been overturned so that's one thing that's coming up um Kishore Shallow, going to try get him on the show um, in light of the AGM being released. So I'm going to reach out to Kishore to try get him on the show. I might try and convince Kishore to do it live, you know. I might try and convince Kishore to do it live and do do that do that episode as a Q&A so the fans almost pick the questions within reason. I'll like Kishore will only agree to that if I moderate it properly. So I'll try and get Kishore on um as well in the near future um the women's team has just been announced to go to um Austria, pakistan so i need to get someone on from I'm, I'm trying i want to get rashada williams on um from jamaica i think that should be fine i just need to cross some i's and dot some t's um with that one so that's something else that i want to sort out um and there was something else that was coming up that i that i was sorting out which I can't remember now. But anyways, it will it will come to me. So those are those are three things. Those are three things that we certainly got coming up on the near horizon. And, and of course, uh, the West Indies Domestic Championship will be back uh, next week. Is it next week? I think it's next week. The next round of the West Indies Championship. So that will be back next week as well. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, Colvern says get Roland Butcher on the show. I should. The only problem with getting Roland on is I don't know if Roland will cuss me out because I've because I've been um, 
I wouldn't say critical of selectors. I just ask questions. Um, but that's that's a shout, to be fair, to get Roland on to reflect on his time as West Indies selectors. So that's also uh, something worth considering um, as well. But listen, people, um, it's 12, sorry, it's 11.30 in the UK. I should have gone to my bed already. Um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, as ever. If you were in the live at any point today, if you're watching this on the replay, thank you for watching it on the replay. Like the video on your way out. Share the video on your way out. Put it in your Facebook groups, your WhatsApp groups, um, your Discord groups, whatever it might be. Um, nowhere else do you get this kind of content um, uh, in, in West Indies cricket, you know? Um, so, yeah, share it with your people. Like the video, share the video, subscribe on the way out and so on and so forth. For those of you who like English county cricket, that starts on Friday. Uh, the first game starts on Friday. I'm supposed to be at Kent. I'm supposed to be doing some commentary for BBC um, on Kent versus Somerset, but I don't know. There's, there's train strikes going on this week, so I don't know if that's actually going to happen. But for those of you who are fans of county cricket, I should be doing, and Santoki should be doing some stuff for BBC across the county season again. Uh, they liked what we did last year, so we're back there again this year. So listen out for that if county cricket is your thing. And obviously, because we've got Jaden here, Kimar here, Jason here, um, obviously there will be some West Indian talent that we'll want to try and interview and go talk to and set some things up and so on and so forth. Anyways, that's enough from me, people. Stay locked in as ever to Caribbean Cricket Podcast on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, on TikTok, on Facebook, on everything. You know where we're at. Hit us up. I've been Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Thank you. And good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Coming. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one stop shop for all things West Indies cricket by the fans, for the fans.